All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Adam Thomas. Um, just, just speaking to Wilson, I actually went to school with his brother. Just, I heard his last name when he was introduced. Um, well, uh, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, I grew up in church, uh, Pentecostal, charismatic. Yeah, I think Jesus one of those type of churches. And um, I've always had a good grasp of the scripture. I've always been able to remember and quote scriptures and everything and can kind of put it together a little bit and you know it I just kind of grew up in that in that atmosphere so I kind of knew that I needed to be good and you know Jesus died for my sins I needed to receive him and all that good stuff but there wasn't really a it wasn't really a conviction there I was kind of I was I was in there but I knew enough not to do anything really bad but there still wasn't that conversion there and this really got brought out in uh, in my college years and I was again I knew enough of the Bible to know that I shouldn't you know shouldn't be engaged in the sexual morality and drinking and all that stuff but at the same time it didn't stop me from having a little vodka every now and again but I would go to church so it was all good um, but uh, you know, like, like you heard from the others I can't really say when things started to change but but there was a time toward the end of my college years when really really just got convicted about look you know you, you're being a hypocrite basically you know better quote unquote but you're not you're not really living it out and um, you know I was being lukewarm and we all know what happens the Lord spits them out you know causing the Lord, basically I was causing the Lord to wretch you know by 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 you know my my, my hypocrisy and um, I moved down here and really, you know, I tried to get quote unquote into church. And Mutual um, Lando got involved with another, you know, Word of Faith Prosperity Church. That's, that's, that's what I grew up in. And uh, around 2000, and I say 2009, 2010, I somehow stumbled across the time of website uh, when I was at work and started listening to him off and on. And uh, he had a Strange Fire conference, I think, in 2012. And um, I listened to it um, because I, 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 from what I've known of him, he, 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 I trusted him. You know, I didn't think, you know, he was a heretic or anything. I thought he knew what he was talking about, but I never heard that there was anything bad about the whole charismatic, you know, speaking in tongues, way of life, grew up in it. You know, I shot out of a bowl, you know, all of that. You know, I, 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 I assumed that that was the way things went, prophesying and people running around the church and all this, you know, wild crazy. I grew up with that. My mom was one of the people that would strain the people when they would catch the Holy Ghost and go, you know, doing all that stuff. So I had never heard, I had never realized that there, that, that was not normal. I thought everybody ran when they went to church. I thought everybody shouted and did all this stuff. So I listened and one of the first things they kind of debunked was the whole speaking in tongues thing. I was raised in, you know, Acts chapter 2, speaking in tongues. It's like a secret code language just between you and God and everybody has one and that's what you used to pray. And, Long story short, found out that wasn't true, and um, that kind of kind of hurt me. You know, like I, I, I thought that I was on the right path. I thought that I knew what I was doing, and I, you know, read Acts chapter two and find out they're speaking earthly language. People understood what they were saying. This hell of a movie, you know, that nobody, nobody's supposed to understand. No, 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 they understood. And um, that kind of sent me on a, on a journey. Like, okay, I've been wrong about this because we. We would have Bible studies in college, and I was that guy. Hey, you need to be speaking in tongues. You need to do all that. I'm like, man, I'm off here. So where else am, am I off? Where else am I wrong? And come to find out, there's a whole bunch of other things that need to be added to that list. Um, so but I say that that strange fire conference really got the ball rolling, where I, I, I knew that that something was lacking, and it wasn't that I could try harder, you know, usually when you say the sinner's prayer, you're in there, but, uh, you know, the churches I was at, you can't just say the sinner's prayer and then go off and do what you want. You say the sinner's prayer and then you try your best, you know, and you, you, you know, you let God do this and that. Um, so, around that time, I really started getting a good grasp of what the gospel is as well, because I started listening to Paul Washer around that time as well, and ironically enough, was people at the Word of Faith Church that I was at that turned me on to Paul Washer, and I kept listening to at some point they stopped, but I um, really started to understand that, you know, even though I knew, you know, Christ died for my sins and, you know, He's gracious and merciful, I, I kind of started to learn about the other side of the things about, you know, why God's mercy is required because 
in your sinners. And, you know, Jesus said in John chapter 3, whoever has a son has life, whoever does not have a son, will not see last, but the wrath of God abides upon him. I'm like, wow, that was been in there the whole time. You know, and just knowing that me trying to do, me doing what I thought I was doing was good. Me doing what I thought was right, I was basically doing worse righteousness. I was trying to be good. I was trying to do better. I was trying to, you know, serving in my church and reading my Bible, doing all the right things, but there wasn't, it was, you know, kind of like, you know, fire insurance, like somebody else mentioned, get out of hell, free card. And um, just really got convicted and, and, and really repented of my sins and really started trusting in Christ, you know, because I've known that scripture, I think it was Isaiah 64 or somewhere in there where it says our, our practices is as filthy rags, but just really going from, okay, knowing that I'm a sinner and I'm thinking I just need to try harder to just resting in what Christ has done because I can't do enough. I can't be righteous in and of myself. There's nothing in me that commits me to God. And um, long story short, I had to leave the church where I was at. Um, I found the Hurts Corner on the radio, actually. And uh, popped in one Wednesday, Pastor Marcos and uh, Clyde and uh, joined a couple, a couple others. And um, just really was, was impressed uh, by just the faithfulness. I mean, it's nothing... You know, not trying to gas anybody up, but just I've never been in a church, you know, where they have accountability, where they actually ask you, how's your prayer life, how you doing, you know, are you, are you, are you trusting in Christ, are you, you know, doing all these things, and um, it's, 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 you know, it basically caused me to, to, you know, I had to move, you know, that's why I'm not at the church where I'm at, that's why, you know, a lot of things that I used to do, speaking in tongues, I had to stop that years ago, you know, and just, just, you know, so I'm just, you know, Thankful to God for the changes that 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 He's uh, been working in my heart and uh, He's trying to be faithful. So I, I think I said that was going to be short, but I don't know if it was. But thank y'all for bearing with me.